Since the commencement of political campaigns in September of 2022, politicians have been marketing themselves, differentiating themselves from others, and making proposals on how they will perform if they get elected. While some of these promises are made at campaign grounds, some are contained in their manifesto. But the experience Nigerians have had with politicians who made big promises during campaigns and failed to implement them have continued to re-engineer the trust deficit. Now, one major issue thrown up at every election cycle in Nigeria is the debate on whether politicians contesting for public offices will fulfill their promise made during the electioneering period, if elected or not. This trust deficit has been a challenge with politicians since the nation returned to its democratic rule in 1999, making it difficult for members of the public to believe most of the campaign promises or commitments made. Well, joining me tonight to discuss the issues are Ikenna Agwaso. He is a legal practitioner and Sunny Maduka, who is a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Great. Um, let me start with you, Mr. Maduka. It's very interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure you've seen more election cycles than I have. So you obviously know where we're coming from when we talk about um, some of these commitments or promises that are being made during campaigns. I remember uh, listening to the campaign, one campaign that was done some back in the 60s. And, and I, I, I heard some things that were similar. Um, sometime in 2019, and I thought to myself, if these promises that were made in, tw in the 60s um, were yet to be fulfilled in 2019, and therefore campaigners are still using the same words and the same slogans and making the same promises, does this mean that we have not necessarily grown from that back then till now? Yeah, <laughs> if I start from 1992, I think that was the time that you can talk about credibility in elections in Nigeria. When uh, Abiola emerged and even defeating Tofa in uh, Kano State. Uh, prior to that, 1993, when it was uh, annulled, what happened was uh, most credible candidates in Nigeria, you know, kind of excused themselves unfortunately anyway when 1999 uh fourth republic uh, emerged they excused themselves because they believe that the same thing that happened to abiola probably would happen so credible people didn't uh, join so what do you have are people who are a little bit with some kind of character defaults you know imagine and taking the space of our political uh, arena. So, you know, to dismantle this particular cabal is going to be very, very, very difficult. So that was the problem. The politics as are today uh, is uh, not as ought to be because the leadership is being controlled by people with uh, deformed characters. So we cannot get it right. And if you go down, you can understand that as human beings, what you don't have, you can't give. Mm -hmm. And you are who you are by your character. In that way, Nigerians are culpable too. Because we have known these people for the past 20 something years. We're supposed to change the trajectory. We're supposed to change our mental ideology, kind of. And but we keep on voting the same people, knowing their characteristics, knowing their kind of people. So that is it. You can't vote a thief and expect your commonwealth to be safe. You can't vote somebody who you know that his character is deformed and you expect honor, integrity, or honesty. It can't happen. Of course, you can't vote a liar, a liar, and you expect <laughs> truthfulness. This is the problem we are having today. We've been voting the same set of people. There's nothing we can do than reap exactly what we voted in for. Uh, I think 2023, I think it's going to change certain things because we can see the enthusiasm of the use because the use I mean, a little bit um, at the background, 
But in 2023, we can see the strength, the zeal that the youth are exhibiting. And that is what, what is going to make this particular election you know, a little bit uh, uh, different. I'm curious when you say that 2023 will be a change. You're talking about the fact that we know the antecedents of these people and, and the fact that they're not trustworthy. But then we're still seeing many people campaign for, I mean, who do we not know within the ranks of these people who are running? I mean, the, the four front runners. We have at least 16 to 18 of these presidential candidates. Nobody talks about the rest of them except, except the three or the four. Um, but then there are people who are supporting them, whether they be young people, whether they be middle class, whether they be the normal people who are party men and women. Um, so the question is, have we really learned anything? Um, or are we just comfortable because we know these faces and that's what we're going for? Because you, you see, you ask the average person, why are you voting for this person? And they say, well, we know him. So again, have we gotten to the point where we are, in your words, um, tired of doing the same thing over and over again, or are we just, you know, somewhat um, numb to the process? I think the problem is that Nigerians are gullible. We are so gullible to the extent we can appreciate suffer, you know, suffering or hardship. Uh, every Nigerian, you know, cannot say is. He can't phantom or he can't understand or he can't read the characters of these ones who are coming up. Nobody can say that. Of course, our politicians understand how gullible we are, and that is why they are using it to do what they are doing. So in this particular aspect, we understand that some of these candidates, what they're after is just life ambition, not to serve. And of course, I, I, I trust, uh, you know, one of the clerics uh, quote. And he says that uh, 2022 will determine the number of Nigerians that are mad and those people that are sane. Because if you look at the political terrain, nobody can tell you what is happening. There are two elders dancing naked. And they are exposing exactly what we don't even know. They are the ones exposing it. So if any Nigerian is, you know, is seeing these particular expositions, these dubious things that have been happening, mm. these people, they, they, the way they've ruined this country, and they decide equally to start supporting this one, then something is wrong with Nigeria. I think maybe we're under a spell. <laughs> because it is, in, it is in the public glare. Nobody can tell you it's not a way of what these ones have done to this country. And of course, they are the ones exposing it. So anyone, any Nigerian who will say, ah, I have not had or known the antecedent of these ones, he's just, he's not a citizen, he's not a patriotic citizen. Hmm. So that is why I said 2023 is going to decide, truly, if Nigerians, we are, we are ready to get out of this particular, you know, infected human beings, or we want to continue in our poverty line. Okay. The choice is ours. But not that we know. Nobody can tell you today it's not that way. But unfortunately, let me tell you, Anne, why I'm so angry is that even the intellectuals, the youth whose future have been ruined, are the ones championing for these ones to continue ruining their future. So it becomes so, so, so much something you can't even phantom. How on earth can you see somebody who is slapping you, killing you, and the way you stand up, you start hailing that same person? Then it will be. Maybe to you gra your grave before you can understand that you're dead. Okay. So I think 2023 is going to determine exactly the kind of Nigeria or Nigerians we are. Okay. I, I believe that. Well, we, are, we, we have a young person in the studio, so I'm going to direct that question to him. It's, it's very interesting, just as he said, that mostly young people who supposedly are um, the ones who are championing for a new Nigeria are the same people who are supporting the so-called, in his word, bad politicians. Um, but how many people, how many Nigerians really do their homework when it comes to politicians, do some background check? Or do we just take them on face value? Because, you know, um, anybody can write a manifesto, anybody can, you know, tell tales. But when it comes down to it, how many of us really do the digging? Um, thank you for having me. First and foremostly, you're right, not enough people are digging. Um, as you, you said earlier, that a lot of us are numb. We don't believe that there's even a point in um, voting. We feel we're just going to be given a leader 
and take it from there. And that leader is going to replicate the same things. There is also a distrust. I think some of our, of our presidential candidates are of good character, but some people refuse to see that. They just say, oh no, all politicians are bad. Um, whichever one we get is not going to do a good enough job. So not enough of us are digging. Not enough of us are asking the right questions. And there's a sense of tribalism still existing um, when we're looking at the elections. You know, you speak to some young people, some would say, I will support this person because he's from my tribe. So are we really tired? Do we want a different trajectory for our future? I'm not so sure. But the reason why I'm here today is hopefully to convince a few who are refusing to make the honest, glaring decisions. You know, so just like uh, my senior statesman said, uh, who is madder, the madman or the people following the madman? So we need to be very honest with ourselves about the reality and pick very wisely because uh, it's our future, literally. Mm. It's uh, literally. Mm. Yes. Um, I, I, I had a, a gentleman here last week, Monday, mm. and I asked the question, if we really know what we want, who we want as a leader, and what, what would be the characteristics? You're a young person. Um, <coughs> just like Mr. Madoka, you may not have suffered, you know, the, the wars and, yes. you know, the independence and all of the, yes. you know, the um, military system. Yes. Um, but what exactly do you think that the average Nigerian young person wants today? Aside from us just saying we want good governance, what are those things that will make a government look like it's good or be good government? Well, um, I will answer that question uh, as a lawyer. We have the reasonable man test. So answer it as a reasonable man should answer it. So anybody outside of this might not be being so reasonable. What we should anticipate, what we should expect, what we should demand, what should be given to the people are the basics, the necessities for them to thrive. That is what we need. We need water, we need shelter, you know, we need food. We need power. These are the things that we need. And some people represent systems, past gov government systems, that have kept these things from being given to the people. So why are we going to the same people expecting, the same, expecting a different result? So you asked. Um, I, as I said, some people are not being very honest and what they want for the country, I'm not sure. A lot of, pe a lot of Nigerians don't believe in Nigeria. But many Nigerians are saying they're tired. They want a new Nigeria. So I, I, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm so asking. So why are some candidates getting traction? Why want? are some candidates getting traction if we want a new Nigeria? If we want a new Nigeria, there are only the, 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 the list of presidential candidates should be reduced to people that can give that. And the most important thing we should look at when we want to pick a leader is the character of the leader. We're looking, as you're right, we've been looking at the surface. We've ignored the interior, which is the heart and the brain, which are they working for themselves or are they working for the people? We need people that will work for the people. That's all we need. What anything else outside of this is going beyond what we need. Mm. What we need are leaders that care. From the character of the men running for president, who do you think? Who does your instinct tell you will care enough about you to do anything well, for you? My instinct tells me, because you're asking about those people who are getting traction, okay. my instinct tells me that this man will give me more money when he's in government. So he will give you more money. Or will give me contracts. I'm, th I'm thinking, because you're asking that there are certain people that shouldn't be getting traction, but they're getting traction. That's because there are people who believe in them, that believe that when they're there, they might get to benefit something from it. Okay, so um, thank you for bringing that up. It's very important. I think as Nigerians, it is time to stop thinking about just yourself, your family, your tribe, and your religion, and think about Nigeria as a whole. Uh, the inflation is affecting me in the south, it's affecting my brothers in the north, it's affecting my brothers in every aspect of Nigeria. The lack of infrastructure is, is across the board. So we need to stop, so, okay, we need to, it's not, you and a few people might be okay under a certain regime, but if Nigeria does not better, you are not, you cannot enjoy that thing that you are claiming you are working alone for. You can't have this studio if your security man has not eaten. 
You understand? Everybody needs to be taken care of. So we need to stop being so small-minded and so selfish. You're right. Another major reason why some political candidates are getting traction is because of the selfish-mindedness of some people. They say, OK, my person goes, this is an opportunity for me and my generation. It, the picture is bigger than any individual or any group of individuals. We're about 200 million. Dr. Madoka, let's talk about re-engineering mindsets, because you see, um, we all, every time we're getting to a closer, closer to an, uh, you know, an election cycle, we always hear that this election is going to either make us or break us. It's going to be a life-changing one. It's going to be, you know, but they, they say, oh, it's a water. In fact, I've heard it so many times. 2023 elections is going to be a watershed moment, yada, yada, yada. Um, but what will make it a watershed moment without the people? Because again, if our mindsets have not been re-engineered in any way, what sort of change are we expecting? Magic? Well, you, you don't expect magic. Uh, you know, <laughs> magic is something that will cloud your mind to look like it's real, but it's not real. The fact is before us here. The truth is before us here. It is glaring. It is unambiguous. Just like uh, Ikena pointed out, as we look at the antecedent of all the candidates, do we go through the history of all these candidates? And even they've even made the job so easy for every Nigerian. They've made this easy because they are the ones bringing out to fore all the atrocities they've committed against this country. So what next do you want us to do? You want God to come down and change our mindset or change us? This is a time for us to look in and do the needful. You know, I used to say people can always go and pray and fast and do whatever. This is not a time for us to fast. This is a time for us to take decisions that is going to affect the, our lives and the lives of our children and future generations. And it's very, very clear. It's not ambiguous. So we know the real and the truth. Until we get out of sentiments, emotional sentiments, there's no way we can re-engineer our mindsets. The emotional sentiment that this is my tribe man or tribe man, this is my religionist man, this is my, my uncle, this is my brother, until we get out of it, it's going to be very difficult for us to change our mindset. A mindset is changed when you look deep and say, no, I have to shift, like a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift will not occur until there's a deliberate action by the person who wants to I'm take so that sorry. I'm so sorry. This, this, this sounds like a lecture for people who are in the middle class. Who, I mean, the average person is hungry. The average person is unable to buy fuel, to you know, power his house. Uh, even his his business or her business. The average person is unable to pay their child's school fees, unable to feed right now as we speak. The, the, the tightening of our belts is almost killing us. And you're saying that we need to re-engineer our mindsets. We need to have a paradigm shift. That man doesn't understand that. He's hungry. So what exact, how do you, how do you appeal to the, to the conscience of that person? And you've just said it. If, if you are hungry and you cannot buy food, if I, you need a uh, fuel, you can't buy fuel. You need a shelter, there's no shelter. The basis, they are not there, provided for by your leaders and by the same set of people who are clamoring for your vote. And you deliberately or decide to vote them back, then you don't have anything to complain. So the, the, the indices are there. The factors are there. Mm. We know that this government and other governments in the past, they failed us. They failed the use. What do we need to do? Look at the, look at the indices. As at 2014-15, a bag of rice is 8,000 plus. What is the bag of rice today? 40-something thousand. Fuel is around 87. Today is 300. I bought fuel in my village, 400 naira per litre. Kerosene. So when you look at those indices, they're enough to change 
your mental, uh, you know, memory or whatever, they are, they are they are enough to reset your mind to know that beyond what we say, the factors that are facing you are clear indication that you need to change your mindset. So it is very clear. Look at today. If I open my phone, I know how many people are asking for one thing or the other. I feel bad. This is a country so blessed, but we can't reap it because some few individuals decide that it is their turn, it is their own uh, uh, you know, ambition, not necessarily because they want to serve. So how do you, how do you phantom that? How can you as a person with average mindset not think that the same set of people, they don't have anything to give you than the same trajectory we are going through. So the indices are there. And so if anybody looking at what is happening today, the situation Nigeria is at today, and you feel that you are OK with it, good. And that is, like I said, let me repeat it again. After 2023, especially the presidential, we know the number of Nigerians who are really sane and you know who are not sane because the, 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 the hardship is very, very, very up. As of today, it's like we don't even have leadership. Nobody is talking to us, nobody is even caring about you as a citizen. The fuel is there, the NMP is not. Care. So, what is it that as a citizen that could give you room, room to even think of returning the same cabals? To rule, hmm. it is a disaster. It okay. is like you digging your own hole for your own grave, or digging your own grave for your dead body. So hmm. we must, we must, with what is happening, we must change our mindset. At least okay. think like human beings okay. and get out of this blood drum. Uh, let me come back to you, Kenya. Um, let's talk about tracking these promises because um, you. If you must hold a politician to his promises, then you have to keep track of it. Exactly. Um, how many of us really keep track of those promises? I mean, uh, kudos to some people who have reminded this government, the Buhari administration, over and over again about some of the campaign promises that they made. Yes. Um, even the very ridiculous ones. Yes. Although the most um, of the, the most of all of them is the three, um, you know, things that he came into power through. He talks about the fact that he was going to fight corruption, he was going to deal with insecurity, he was going to deal with un unemployment, um, you know, um, he also talks about corruption, but we, how many of these things have we seen the Buhari administration accomplish? Even though the president has again and again pat himself on the back saying he's done his best, it's just that you guys can't see it. But now we have a lot of young people who are committed, we're seeing a lot of young people getting their PVCs, yes. still a lot more, you know, sitting on it's the done. fence. Yeah. Um, what, how do we track these promises? How do we make sure that we hold these people to account? Because it looks again that uh, like we, we're more of complainers as opposed to people who are yes. holding our leaders responsible. Okay. So as uh, my senior statesman mentioned about uh, the mentality, you see the Nigerian mentality is one that is based on a perception of respect where uh, our elders are basically gods and whatever they say is the case. But God exists, and God has said the nature of uh, behavior that human beings should have towards each other, love, respect, inclusivity. Um, if we're not keeping in line with that, then whatever else we are doing is not good enough. Um, so yes, as you said, we seem to be more complainers because in our society, as a, as a, as a, our culture, the Nigerian culture is, uh, you're dictated to what is and what isn't. And that is tailored to what favors certain people. So we actually need to hold our leaders accountable. How? Um, well, simply is by first having leaders that care enough beyond the point. Um, manifestos, maybe we should do a manifesto review every two years, every, every year. Where are we on our manifesto? We said we're doing this, this, and this. Hey, my people, we've done up until this point. At one year, we've done up to this well, point. We should do that. Well, what if he doesn't care to do that? That's that is your where... responsibility to hold him to account. How do you do that? Uh, well, um, I mean, this is where things like protesting, against certain things that our leaders have done 
rather than sitting down and looking, let us actually take action. It Last seems... time you, we protested, you yes. saw what happened. So yes. Who's to say that you can't actually protest again? Why can we not protest again? Well, it's, a civic, NSAS, it's a civic you, duty. You saw how NSAS ended. So yes. how many people are willing to join you to go back to the streets after what they saw? It depends on their level of care. As I said, if we, this is both, this conversation is intertwined in the sense that if we do not pick a good leader, then we're going to be dealing with these issues where we have to be answering the hard question. Of the people we are dealing with, of the people presenting themselves for the position, who do you think you can call out to and they will answer you based on the character of the people? So you need to pick leaders that can even answer you. This is why the choice of leadership is in our hands. It is our, it's our time now to decide, and we should decide wisely. We cannot pick somebody from the same system and put an, an, an anticipate a difference. Then we're not being honest with ourselves. We can't pick people that have corruption all over them and say that we are hoping for a better Nigeria. So a lot of Nigerians are still only thinking for themselves and they want to get their own opportunity to be part of that pie stealing. That is why some of us, because Nigerians are some of, if not, you can, we're part of the 1% of intelligent people. The most, the most uneducated Nigerian man anywhere in the world is still as very much intelligent as anyone else, any other human being on earth. Where do, you, where do you see, I mean, the elections are about 34, if not mistaken, 34, 35 days away from today. Mm -hmm. And PVCs are yet to be received. Picked up, yes. And many other people who have even picked these PVCs are picking it up because they will use it as a form of, you know, um, identity, not necessarily that they want to show up to vote. Zaydi card, yeah. Uh, if you were to talk to the young people who are watching tonight, what would be the, the messaging to them? Let us not be too quick to forget and ignore experiences. Now, we are not talking of our parents' generation where we've heard stories. We've had direct experiences. You've given examples. We've had direct experiences, enough to teach all of us. We need to be very honest. I came on this show because hopefully soon I'll be a father. I'm also a son and I'm a brother to every Nigerian on earth. So this is part of my civic duty, not because I want to be in the public eye, I don't want to be, but I have no choice but to come and speak up because I'm seeing some of us are still leaning towards the same mistake. And the same mistake is, is costing, is, uh, is suicidal. The same mistake is suicidal. So we need to, our, our, our PVCs count and we need to use it wisely. Do not use it for money, do not use it for short term. Have a look at things in a long term perspective. What is best for our future? That is what we need to look at when making this decision. Well, um, better said that way. I mean, I want to say thank you, um, Mr. Madika, for being part of the conversation. Um, Sonny Madika is a political analyst, and Ikene Agbaso is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. It was the a pleasure. The conversation has to continue. It doesn't yes. end here. Yes. It has to continue. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Thank well, you. we'll take Thank a quick you. break. When we return, we'll be discussing the recent signing of a peace accord by some presidential candidates with others absent. What is the power that binds these candidates to the peace accord? We'll be right back after this break.